Hello viewers, today's lecture is based on a long story, The Management of Grief by Bharti Mukherjee. It is a very poignant, remarkable, heart-touching story. Theme-wise, it is somber. It is talking about human calamities, human tragedies. I want to begin today's discussion with the lines from Tithonus by Tennyson. The woods decay, the woods decay and fall. The vapors weep their burden to the ground. Man comes and tills the field and lies beneath, and after many a summer, dies the swan. The poem tells the world is characterized by impermanence and transient and fleeting moments. This is the theme of the story, management of grief, that is the death, and at times when it is very shocking, when it is untimely death. This story poignantly deals with the crucial and inevitable aspect of life death. Death is sure to come to all that is born. Whosoever undergoes the process of birth has to meet the contrary phenomenon of death. And this law is valid, universally valid and applicable. Death is a painful parting which robs life of its joys. Everyone struggles against death and loss created by death. Although everyone knows that this is an inescapable aspect of life, yet the very thought of it fills us with fear and horror. The untimely death of separation from loved ones because of accident, illness, or untoward events traumatizes the relatives who are left behind. The story The Management of Grief is about an Indian community in Canada who is grieving over the loss of their family members in a plane crash. It is heart-rending fictional account of a woman's reaction to the 1985 bombing of Air India flight. It has been published in 1988 in the collection The Middleman and the Other Stories. The story is narrated by Shaila Bhave. Shaila Bhave is the narrator and the protagonist of the story. The story unfolds around her. She uh, explores the effect of this tragedy on herself and also on the other Indian Canadian community. People have lost in this plane crash their family members. Shaila has lost her husband and two sons. Kusum, her friend, she is a foil uh, in the novel, in the story. She lost her uh, husband, okay, uh, Satish, and her second daughter. The name of the daughter is not mentioned. Shaila is appreciated for her severity and loveliness. Then Dr. Ranganathan, who has lost his family members. Now he is all alone. A sick elderly couple has lost their sons. So it is story of Shaila, Kusum, sick elderly couples, Dr. Ranganathan, who have lost their dear ones in this crash. The first person narration. Uh, Shaila recounts the emotional events surrounding the event and explores their effects on herself and other people from the Indian Canadian community. The story is about the kind of grief that any human experiences when loses the dear one and how they cope up with the tragedy, try to overcome this shock. So the story is telling about the ways the people are coping up with this tragedy. It sensitively points out various stages of grief, shock and denial, pain and guilt, anger and bargaining, loneliness and the upward turn. Reconstruction and acceptance. In the story, uh, the story is unfolding four stages. First is rejection. The people are not ready to accept. The second is depression. They become depressive when such loss occurs. And the third is um, acceptance. They have to accept that this is a part and parcel of a life 
and reconstruction. Then after some time they get involved in various activities with which they will be able to overcome this grief. One has to start the life at a one point of a time. Okay, the story begins in the house of Shaila Bhave. That they are in Toronto. Her house is filled with strangers gathered together for legal advice, company and the tea. The Indians who are living in Canada, they are observing Indian tradition, helping and supporting the person with their warmth, with their presence. The people are talking, but she is involved in her own thought. Kusum and a lot of women, they are there. She doesn't know who are they. And she is hearing the voice of her children. The Sharma boys who are there, they murmur rumors that Sikh terrorists had planted a bomb. Shaila narrates the scene from a hedge, speaking with detached, shell-shocked calm. Shaila has controlled her composure. She is calm, but inwardly a lot of troubled by a lot of thoughts. She maintained her stable appearance, but inside she feels tensed and ready to scream. It is imagined cries of her husband and sons that isolate her from the anxious activities that are taking place in the house. It is really very difficult to remove, to delete the memories of the dear one. People are always being troubled by the memories of the dead. That takes away the dear ones, but not the memory that is associated with them. The memory of the departed ones makes the relatives restless. The memory makes the living unbearable. Shaila feels sorry for those who left the world. She remembers a housewarming party that brought cultures and generations together in their sparkling, spacious suburban home. And now those happy faces are no more. People in this world console each other by saying that God has given us everything and God will take away one day everything. So don't be troubled by this. Uh, Kusum here asks a very pertinent question. Why does God give us so much if all along he intends to take it away? Life Many times does not provide us opportunities to fulfill our desires and dream, those we cherish close to our heart. We hope to accomplish our desires one day, but the cruel blow of death left us with no hope. Shela regrets her perfect obedience to upper class Indian female decorum. She has, for instance, never called her husband by his first name and told him she loved him. Here, the text is presenting a clash between tradition and modernity, old and young generation, old and modern values and Indian and Western pattern of life. Kusum uh, consoles her that you have not expressed your love but you love your husband. In today's time, today's modern women, they very frequently express their love but that is fake. Kusum then comes Kusum's first daughter Pam and she informs a reporter is coming. Pam is a manifest example of the modern young girls that Kusum disdains. She has refused to go to India with her father and younger sister, preferring to spend that summer working at McDonald's. Through the mother and the daughter relationship, a clash is shown between Indian and Western ways of life. Pam exchanges harsh words and Pam accuses Kusum of wishing that Pam had been on the plane since the younger daughter was a better Indian. Now comes a social worker, Judith Templeton, hoping Shela will help her in helping the relatives of the diseased. Judith is described as a young, commonly and professional to a fault. She enlists Shela to give the right human touch to the impersonal work of processing papers for relief funds. Judith tells Shela that she was chosen because of her exemplary calm and describes her 
as a pillar of the devastated Indian Canadian community. Shaila explains that her seemingly cool, unaffected demeanor is hardly admired by her community. In India, it has been expected a wife should cry, a mother should cry, should express her love, or her grief loudly. But here she is calm. She is not expressing. For that, she may be uh, questioned in her uh, Indian community, questioned by Indian community. She can be called as a freak. Though Judith, through Judith, Shela also comes to know about the other people, other old parents who are still breathing, who have not come out of their homes. Some wives are still hysterical. It is very difficult to accept the blow of death. The help given by the government officer officers lacks sympathy. Thick treatment towards the relative. At this juncture, they are more in need of understanding and sympathy than money. The loss is same, but everyone handles it in his own way. Walking through grief may be long and difficult process. Grieving the death of a person close to us often involves very painful feelings. Waves of grief may come and go over months or years. Sometimes it may feel like pain will never end. There are different ways of expressing and coping with this grief. As Shella says, quote, we all must grieve in our own way, unquote. The life oscillates between hope and despair. When unable to bear the pangs of separation, the relatives, they want to commit suicide. And this suicidal tendency is shown in both the characters, Kusum and Shaila. Now, the story opens on the coast of Ireland four days later. They are overlooking the place where the Air India jet the crashed into the Irish Sea. Shaila travels with Kusum and other mourners to Ireland to identify and possibly recover the bodies of the deceased. Kusum and Shela are wading in the warm waters and recalling the lives of their loved ones, imagining they will be found alive. Kusum had not eaten for four days and Shela wishes she had also died here along with her husband and sons. Shela, half fanciful, tells us that they pretend to spot their loved ones on the waves at sea from their vantage point on the cliff. At one point, both Shela and Kusum go into the water, hoping a miracle that perhaps there are survivors pinned under a rock close by, or that the swimming prowess of Shela's son might have resulted in a miraculous escape from the crash. Shela's maternal drive to locate her husband and sons is never relinquished, even when it seems logical to give up. Here, they have been joined by Dr. Ranganathan from Montreal, another man who has lost his family, and he cheers them with thoughts of unknown isolates within swimming distance. He scatters pink rose petals on the water, explaining that his wife used to demand pink roses every Friday. Offering rose petals or flowers on the surface of the sea is a very ancient Indian symbol to honor death. He offers Shela some roses, but Shela denies because she has brought her own gift for her people. She has brought half-finished model B-52 for her son Mithun and for Vinod uh, old pocket calculator and for her husband Vikram she has written a poem where she has articulated her love and she offers these things to in their honor. Shela is trying to seek relief through calming pills and Kusum she has cons uh, consulted a Swami a a religious man and who is in Toronto. This man, this Swami, tells her that all the victims, Hindu, Christian, Sikh, Muslim, Parsi and atheist, all were fated to die together here in the 
Irish Sea. It has already been written in their fate. It is predestined. That's why they have died together. So religious discourse or thoughts try to console the people in their own way. Quote, they are the people who are no more in this world. Swami says, they are in a better place than we are. My Swami says that depression is a sign of our selfishness. If we cry, if we wail, it's because we are selfish. The people who are no more in this world, their soul is resting in peace. They are in a better position. They are free from anxiety and suffering, sufferings of the world. But the people who are alive, they cry for the dead for their selfish motives. Lord Krishna gives a very clear definition of death in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2nd, shloka 22. Vasansi jiranani yatha vihaya, navani grihati naro parani, tatha sharirani vihaya jirna, nyanyani sanyati navani dehi. As a person puts on a new garments, giving up old ones, the soul similarly accepts new materials, bodies, giving up the old ones and useless ones. Lord Krishna also mentions that that is a very natural process and a sane person, a jnani person should accept it and should not get bewildered by it. One who has taken birth is sure to die and after death one is sure to take birth again. Therefore, in the unavoidable discharge of your duty, you should not lament. The people should not lament for the person who is no more in this world. So this philosophy is also been uh, told by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. In the story, there are the three cultures, Indian, Canadian and Irish are set in contrast. Shela is struck by the compassionate behavior of the Irish and compares them to the residents of Toronto who were apathetic and indifferent. She appreciates the benevolent and warm-hearted behavior of Irish. When called by the police to identify a body thought to be her son, Shela insists that it is not him. Kusum has identified her husband, looking through picture after picture. Shela does not find a match for anyone she knows. She is unable to provide a positive identification of any of her family members. There are various segments in this. The story can be divided into various segments. The first one is where a conversation is taking place between Shaila and Kusum. In the second, the arrival of the Judith Templeton. In the third, they are in the Ireland. And now from here, she will go back to India. We have completed till here. The next, uh, in the next class, I will move ahead. Thank you. See you in the second lecture.